Hey guys and welcome back. This is now my second ever YouTube video. I feel like I'm a little bit more confident than I was last time so let's see how this goes. Today I want to talk about the ins and outs of booking a full service sex worker aka an escort. Um, my name is Lilith Lodge and I live in Brisbane, Australia. I work on the higher end of the full service market and uh, yeah I think it's a pretty taboo industry. Not a lot of people talk about it and I think it might help some people who are nervous about taking the steps into it if they know a little bit more about what goes on behind closed doors. So anyway, we'll get started on how it all works. So firstly, the client will contact us via mobile phone. We have work phones that they will contact us on. Make sure that you are reading the girl's ad in full before you even message her. Make sure that you've read every single line of that ad and preferably twice just to make sure that you understand what you're getting yourself into majority of the information that you need will be on there and in a lot of states even the services that that girl provides are listed on her ad in brisbane here it's not legal for us to be advertising our specific services online um, that's just the law and there's nothing that I can do about that but that is why our services are not on our ads online um, and that way you know the guy needs to contact us via the mobile to find out what it is that we do included in service services. Some girls will have a standard rate for you know quite basic services and then extra things like kissing could be an extra for some girls bondage, BDSM type things could be quite a big extra for other girls, backdoor entry could be a big extra for some girls, and some may not offer it at all. Uh, so it's just going to depend on that girl and what she is comfortable with offering. All of that should be discussed before you even pay a deposit or organise anything. Just keep in mind that you need to be really clear during the contacting process because the girls do get a lot of time wasters and if you are just backwards and forwards one question at a time really dragging out the booking process they're going to assume that you are a time waster and you're probably either going to stop getting replies altogether or you may end up the girl might snap at you. So yes, just make sure you're being very clear. If you have questions, put them all in the one message, just so that it doesn't feel like it's being dragged out. Once a date and time is agreed to and that girl's schedule allows for it, they will send you whatever their in-call address is, or if they are going to an out-call to see you, then that's perfectly fine. Um, that in-call address may be a hotel, motel, depending on what price point you're talking and where that girl is staying, or it could be their own private property. Uh, example myself, I live here and I work from here. For me at least, on the day of the morning of that booking, I will reach out to the client and just let them know, hey, I'm just confirming everything's all good for today, but obviously some girls will do things differently. So with all of this, I can only speak on what I personally do. Um, so yes, once I've got a deposit from the client and ID, if it's an out call, then um, I can send them through where I am located, my personal address. When the client arrives, we we'll normally, obviously there's a bit of a difference with each booking. Some things go slightly off course, but the standard sort of thing will be go to the kitchen, uh, offer them a drink, so whether it's water, an alcoholic beverage, a soft drink, whatever it is they want, I'll get that for them and then at that point if they haven't already gotten out the money to leave it on the kitchen bench, I will ask for it and say, hey, like, let's just sort out the boring stuff now um, because you want to make sure that you are getting payment pretty much immediately. Please excuse me, but he is being naughty. Yes very loud <laughs> but yes yeah, so you want the payment to be handed over to the girl pretty much immediately within you know the first couple minutes of you stepping inside of the apartment if not as soon as you walk in it's always difficult if you have to ask somebody for payment it's just a nicer thing if they hand it over straight away from there while they're finishing their water whatever the case is um, and like I'm having a, a quick drink before we get started we'll have a bit of a chat and that can just be a friendly chat sometimes that might be the topic of you know what exactly of those services are you most looking to try is there anything kinky that you want to try 
we normally will have that type of conversation in that period of time. If it's a very long booking, multi hours, that conversation there, the chit chat, the getting to know each other and the drinking may continue for quite some time. In an average, you know, it's 15 minutes, 20 minutes of that initial point. From there, then the client jumps in the shower. This isn't because they smell, it's not an insult to you if you're asked to get in the shower. This is just how it works for an in-call. This is to make sure that they are definitely clean to save embarrassment when you get to that next step. If, you know, there's a hygiene issue, it's giving one more chance to sort of sort it out. At that point, the client will jump into the shower. They'll have a quick shower. Some people are only in there for like three minutes. Some people might be in there for 10. It really just depends on the person. Some of the guys do come straight from work. So they want to have a bit of a longer shower. Um, while they're in the shower, it's really important that we have a bit of time, one, to put away any money that we were given because that's important. We can't just leave it on the bench in the instance that somebody is going to steal it back um, and for me personally in that time that they're in the shower I will quickly go and uh, you know make sure that I'm looking okay and sometimes put lingerie on when they come out of the shower they'll use mouthwash they'll normally come out with a towel on or just completely naked and just stroll on out from there they'll normally come pretty much within a minute or two come straight into here and that's when Things will progress, obviously, when they're here, there are not care bears and things on the bed. I do change the way that my place looks slightly for bookings just to, you know, be a little bit more professional, but since I live here as well, that's why, you know, there is an Udi and care bears in the background. So from that point, it normally will, you know, start to progress from there. Everyone is different. Some people are very confident when they come to see a full service worker and you know, they don't need any time to warm up. They're just ready to go. Other people are very shy and they might need quite a little bit of warming up to the event to get things to happen. So um, then after the main event, depending on the type of service that that girl's, girl offers, she may do multiple, so you keep going. It, it just depends. It depends on what that girl offers. Um, most people need a bit of a break in between and it would depend how long the booking is. Then there's normally time for a bit of a chat. Uh, for me personally, I use an alarm to let me know that the booking time is up. I'm not allowed to hang anything inside of this apartment, which is why I don't have a wall clock. And I also find it really stressful for me to try to keep an eye on time when I'm trying to be in the moment just as much as they are to give the best experience that I can. So I would prefer the alarm to be sounding to signify the end of the booking so that I'm not spending the entire time thinking about how long there is left. So when that alarm goes off, normally that's the cue for the guys to get going, their time is up. They can extend at that point. If you want to extend and you're booking a spicy girl, make sure that you are paying her when that alarm goes off. You don't get to do another hour and pay her at the end. That's not how it works. You need to pay for it up front before that new time commences. Um, so yeah, there's that bit of info for you. If that client has decided not to extend, that's the end of their booking, normally, you know, give them a couple minutes to jump in the shower before they leave because most people don't want to be covered in lube and whatever else while they're trying to drive home. So they have a few minutes to have a quick shower, say goodbye and head out the door. Depending on your relationship with that client, if it's a regular, you know, they may stay five or ten minutes over time. It's not the end of the world. Everyone's different with how they operate. But generally, if you hear a buzzer alarm go or the lady tells you if she's using a wall clock, if she says to you, time's up, time's up. Um, and, you know, obviously don't need to run out the door, but start moving because she's got other things that she needs to be doing. I completely forgot to mention a health check. So this is something that a working lady will do. It's a quick inspection of your down below area to see if there is anything unusual. This could be something like warts, herpes, weird discharge, weird smells, um, anything like that that may be a bit concerning to her. If you do not pass a health check, you will not receive full service from anybody. Uh, that's just how it is because there's certain things that can be transmitted to that girl with the condom use example herpes can still be transmitted even with a condom on because of the skin around it uh, also things can happen sometimes condoms may break slip anything like that 
and even though that may only happen you know two three times in a year it's just one of those risks and if you've got anything that looks suspicious they may deny your booking so that health check will happen during your booking don't be alarmed or concerned about it it's just part of the job and part of that goal keeping safe working girls are meant to have a current health certificate uh, they ha legally have to have them done every three months that says that they have been tested and checked you can ask to see those and a girl a working girl should be able to show you proof that keep in mind that some places will put her real name and not her working name on the certificate so she does have the right to keep her name covered on the certificate because it may have been written in her real name and not her working name for any other industry girls watching this I do recommend you trying to find somewhere that will write it in your working name just for your safety in case something goes wrong yes Rupert we can hear you we can hear you so yes I hope that that helps I feel like the less taboo and weird we all are about this line of work the more comfortable it's going to feel for a lot of people you know in my eight months eight months that I have been escorting um, I really only had two bad issues in escorting um, and one of them I would consider quite minor I really hope that we end up changing the way that we view not just people like me who do this work but also the clients who use our services because there's nothing wrong it's just at the end of the day it's a basic human need and as long as you are going in and you're being respectful of the girls and not trying to push her boundaries and push for things that she doesn't offer you should get a pretty good experience so yes I hope that has helped somebody sorry about the cats going crazy for a bit there but um yeah I hope you guys have a good day bye <laughs>